When I was growing up, I thought I was going to grow up to be some sort of employee that puts on a suit, shirt and tie and works for like a big bank or a big company in a nice big office in the city of London. How wrong I was. Today's video is going to be a bit different because I recently received this, which I'm guessing is a 100,000 subscriber plaque sent to me by YouTube. Now, first off, I want to apologize to many of you because in my last video, A Brief History of Hedge Funds, I said that my next video is going to be about private equity. Now, it's been an extremely busy week for me because on Monday I launched, officially launched Simply. You can find out more about Simply. It's going to be linked in the video description. I've just been, all my time has been taken up on Simply, so I haven't been able to get around to scripting, editing and filming the private equity video. But rest assured, that video is going to come out in the next few days or next week. Anywho, today I'm going to just talk to you about this journey that I've been on for the last three years on YouTube. And so I've got a few uh, bullet points here. Some of you sent in some questions on Instagram. So I'm going to just run through these, talk to the camera, answer these. And at the same time, we are going to unbox this. So without any further ado, let's get straight to it. Um, okay, first question. Or, all right, did I think I'd be a YouTuber? So in all honesty, let me put that there. If you ask me between the ages of, I'm 30 years old now. If you ask me between the ages of zero and 25, do I think I would pursue a career as a content creator or a YouTuber? I wouldn't have even known what that was. Like I would have thought never. I'm, you know, at that time I was working at Goldman Sachs. I was pursuing the whole banking route and YouTube didn't really come to mind. So this type of career would have been the last thing on my mind. I always knew that I kind of wanted to give back or help out or do something that's bigger than myself. YouTube is a means to do that. I was very limited in how I could do that when I was in the world of work, because oftentimes when you work for an investment bank, you're kind of limited in the number of things that you can do outside of work because the company needs to manage its brand and there's a lot of bureaucracy. So if you ask me, did I ever think I would be a YouTuber? The answer was no or is no. But in this day and age, like we're in 2022 now, 10 years from now, there's gonna be so many other careers, new careers that we don't know about that don't exist today. Um, and so my advice to anyone watching this is be open-minded, explore different routes. For me personally, I kind of started YouTube. It, it's never been a full-time thing for me. It's always been on the side, one or two days a week. Even if you're working a full-time job, you could spend evenings or weekends on YouTube or a side project. Um, and you never know where it's going to take you, especially with the growth in technology, creator economy, all of that. So I would say, you know, always keep an open mind. Don't just follow what everyone else is following. But to answer your question, did I think I'd be a YouTuber? I never thought I'd be a YouTuber and here I am today. I call myself a part-time YouTuber, in fact, because if I made YouTube a full-time thing, I think there would be a lot more pressure um, and it would be a lot, I think it would be a lot scarier to do it full time, to just put all my eggs into one basket. And that's why I'm kind of working on Simply. And throughout the last five or so years, I've always been doing something else other than YouTube. <clears throat> all right, let's see. Why did I start the YouTube channel? So it goes back to when I was in university, I had to do so many interview practice application practice and all of that and there wasn't like there were a lot of resources and charities and stuff that existed to help students like me kind of break into companies but one thing i realized was there wasn't a resource online in terms of videos who i could relate to that kind of gave me the step-by-step -step guide to go from pre-university to university student and break into a top investment bank or a top company, whether it's a consulting company, investment bank, financial institution, whatever it might be. And so uh, initially for me, it was, you know what? Like at the time I was working at Goldman Sachs and it was like, I've got all this knowledge in here about how to get into these organizations, how to do well in interviews, how to ace your assessment centers, how to pass the online tests, all of this stuff. And where I come from, all these kids, they don't have a clue. And so I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna create all these videos, one video a week. That's what I told myself, just one video a week, put it up on YouTube 
and then distribute it online, tell people about it on LinkedIn, because at the time I had a good LinkedIn following. Throughout university and when I started my career, I used to post on LinkedIn career advice and tips for young people and students. By then I had 20,000 followers on LinkedIn and so I could leverage that to promote the YouTube videos. Started posting one video a week um, just to share the knowledge and the tips that were in here because I knew if I can share some advice and it helps one young person who comes from a similar background to me, then that's amazing, that's very powerful. So I thought, all right, let me do this. See if it works, experiment, see what happens. And then it started gaining traction, it started working, and I thought, you know what, we might be onto something. And then I just continued. All right, next question. Ooh. When this came through the post today, I got, I'll be honest, it, it was smaller than I expected. So I thought it would be like maybe that big. I mean, I'm, I'm grateful, don't get me wrong. And to be fair, this, the only reason I have this is thanks to you. Every single one of you that has ever watched a second of my videos, you know, it's helped the channel grow. And today we have this. Um, but yeah, it's really nice. It's got good weight to it. I think so 100,000 is silver. Next step is 1 million subscribers. That one's probably like that big. And then if you get 10 million, you get the diamond play button. Um, but anyway, before we go on to what were my expectations when I started, I think it's here, look. Oh, it's a letter. All right, let's put this aside. Let's read the letter. All right, some 100,000 subscribers. Ah, don't wanna see it, don't wanna see it, don't wanna see it, wanna see it with you. All right, so, fancy paper. All right, some 100,000 subscribers. Just how far have you come? If each of your subscribers were a light year, they could take you from one side of the Milky Way to the other. That's far, that's very far. And it's why today we're so excited to celebrate your special YouTube journey with you. Not only have you brought a unique voice and style to the world, you've also created, a valuable, created valuable connections and built a community along the way. In that spirit, YouTube is proud to present you with the Silver Creator Award, which celebrates your hard work and incredible achievement. <clears throat> Congratulations on this amazing milestone, just one of the many that we hope will follow in the future. After all, there are countless others out there who have yet to discover your passion and dedication through that. Whether they come to your channel to learn something new or just for a laugh, a whole new audience is waiting for you to inspire them. Just as your growing community continues to inspire you. Indeed, we can't wait to see what you do next and we'll be with you every step of the way. Yours sincerely, Suzanne Wachiki, CEO of YouTube. That's nice. Don't know if you can see it. Um, but yeah, so that's a nice letter. Now, the main event. Actually, before that, let's just answer this question. What were, what were my expectations when I started? In all honesty, I remember after I left Goldman's, I was like, all right, I'm gonna do this CV doctor thing, consulting service for students, graduates, uh, employees on their CVs, interview prep, all of that. And I thought on the side, I'm gonna do one video a week on YouTube. My expectation is gonna be zero. I have no expectation for one full year. That's what I said. And I remember telling everyone this, I'm gonna post one video a week with no expectations whatsoever. And then at the end of the year, I'm gonna see what the outcome was. And then by the end of that year, the channel, because I was consistent one video a week and because I was posting on videos and topics that were interesting and people cared about and a lot of students were searching, by the end of the year, I had, I think, 25,000 subscribers. And then I kept going. By the end of the second year, I had 50,000 subscribers. And now it's been three years, we've got to 100,000 subscribers. So good growth, but I think it could be better. There's always room for improvement. But obviously, don't get me wrong, it's come with tons of opportunities, which I'll talk about. Um, it's kind of, you know, provided me with a nice income, um, led to various opportunities, and it's been, in all honesty, it hasn't been work, it's been play, it's been fun for me. So it goes back to that Naval Ravikant quote, do what looks like work to others, but is play to you, and you'll never have to work a day in your life. So yeah, that's, there was no expectations when I started. Okay, now let's see this. Let's take that. Damn, what's this? Blah, blah, blah. No, it don't look damaged, it looks good. All right. Nice. Okay, here we go. Let's open this. Damn. 
Damn, that is clean. Look at that. Oh, nice felt back. All right. Afsal Hussein for passing 100,000 subscribers. That's cool. That will go somewhere on the bookshelf. I don't know, I'll put it somewhere. But for now, let's have it there. Oh shit, interesting. All right, so let's put that aside. Now let's answer the questions. Highs versus lows. Um, the highs are obviously when a video gets lots of views. So I think when I did the industry series of videos, those were very popular. My first or second video was like a day in the life of Goldman Sachs analyst. That did really well. I think that's got over 700,000 views right now. So when you do videos and they take off, it feels great, it's good. But at the same time, you don't wanna get caught up on just doing videos for the views because when the views aren't good, it could be quite depressing. You could be like, oh my God, my life's gonna come crashing down. My YouTube channel is doing poor. What am I gonna do? And you start stressing. So I try not to, you know, focus on that too much. Um, I think naturally, if you're putting out value consistently, people will find your stuff. The algorithm will do its job for you. You know, when I first started making money from YouTube, it was like a couple dollars a day from the advertising revenue. And then it starts going up and up, which is great. And then sponsors start reaching out to you. So when companies start reaching out to me and it's like, yo, we wanna work with you. And then I quote them a fee and then that fee goes up. Sometimes it's lower, sometimes it's higher. And you start, it ends up being a very entrepreneurial thing. Some of the lows are, yeah, when you put out a video and it doesn't perform too well, you're like, ah, oh, I spent all this time and the video isn't getting views. Sometimes you don't wanna, you, you, you could be lazy. You could sometimes not be in the mood to, like to set this up, camera, microphone, lighting, and then to edit if you haven't, you know, outsourced your editing. Um, sometimes it could be like a chore, you might not wanna do it. So being consistent week on week, that's, that's very important. But sometimes you're just not in the mood, so that could be one of my lows. Um, but overall, you know, broadly speaking, it's been consistent highs because it's been a hobby for me. It's been something that I wanna do. I know when I put out a video, even if it gets one view, typically they get over a thousand views, right? If it gets one view, it's done its job, I'm happy, I've helped someone. That's it, that's all I need. Um, so, so yeah, it's been very good in that sense. Oh my God, I didn't even realize the cat just came here. Come, Whoa. there's the cat. He's looking at the mic. Give us a meow. He's not interested. All right, I'll tell you what, you could chill here and I'll do the video. Um, all right, opportunities the YouTube channel has led to. Lots of sponsorship opportunities, working with interesting brands. Um, I've done a campaign with the City of London Corporation, which is crazy. I've worked with so many other brands and they're all great brands that I never thought I would work with. Also, growing an audience, like all these people, all of you tune in to watch these videos and it's allowed me to grow the subscriber base to over 100,000 people, which is crazy. Um, but at the same time, it's powerful. So I'm working on Simply right now. I'm kind of doing that full time. And the mission with Simply is to connect job applicants with existing employees, but job applicants from underprivileged communities. Initially, when I started YouTube, it was just an experiment but as time goes on you learn to kind of treat YouTube more like a business leverage it from a commercial standpoint but at the same time try and provide value in each video to everyone that is viewing it because I understand like you guys are clicking on these videos you're giving me your time you're literally giving I'm taking time from your day so I need to be very considerate in how I kind of spend your time so it's very important do I regret leaving the world of banking Honestly, no, not one bit because, and the reason is now next year, five years down the line, there will always be opportunity for me to go and work for an investment bank. Worst case scenario, I can go and do a master's degree. While I'm doing the master's degree, I apply for an internship at an investment bank, get the internship, join as a full-time graduate, earn a good salary, whatever. But that's always gonna be there. And I think timing is very important. So I think I personally chose the right time to do it. I did it when I was 25 because I knew at that time, you know, you don't have as many responsibilities in life. It's a good time to kind of take a bit of career risk rather than later on when, if you take the risk, there's a lot more at risk. Like it's, it's riskier to earn a lower salary when you're older than it is when you're younger. And so my advice to students and graduates, you know, between the ages of 20 and 30, take as much career risk as possible um, because after 30, life kind of gets a bit more serious. 
you might have a mortgage, you might be married, you might have kids on, on the way. So take that career risk earlier on. So yeah, no regrets whatsoever. For me, it's always regret minimization framework, right? So ask yourself before any big decision, if I don't do this, am I gonna regret it five, 10, 15 years down the line? If you think you are gonna regret it, if the answer is yes, then just go for it. You don't wanna look back and be like, ah, I wish I did things differently because life is short and you wanna make the most of it. So for me personally, I prioritize freedom and flexibility and working for an investment bank, I don't get freedom and I don't get flexibility. All praise to God. I'm in the fortunate position where I can kind of pursue these things. Um, so I'm very, very lucky and I don't wanna take it for granted. Second to last question, what did it take personally? Sometimes I wish or I think, should I have done YouTube full time, five, six, seven days a week? Because then maybe I would have grown subscribers faster. I might be on 1 million subscribers now. But then I think, I don't know, do I wanna do it full time? It means I won't be able to work on other projects like Simply. So personally, the commitment over the last two to three years for me on YouTube was one to two days a week, scripting a video, editing it back and forth with sponsors and brands for you know um, integrations, partnerships, and all of that, managing YouTube as a business. Uh, so one to two days, sometimes maybe three days, but at most on average two days a week, but I've enjoyed it, it's been fun and I've created content on things I wanted to. So that it's not been a massive commitment. You could do it, you know, on the side of a full-time job. If you're thinking about getting into YouTube, making a YouTube channel, it's definitely doable. However, most people, they'll start, they won't see results and then they'll quit. The people that really make it, they go for a very, very long period of time. They don't see results and then the channel just pops off and it goes compound, right? It compounds and grows. So it depends how long you can commit to it, how long you're willing to go without seeing results. Just like working out, when you work out, you see a few results and then you don't see results for a while. But if you keep going, you hit a tipping point where once you pass that point, then you unleash the results that you've been looking for. But everyone's time frame is different. So those who keep at it tend to see the best results. And last question before we wrap up is, what's the plan for the YouTube channel going forward? All right, so now, I've got 100,000 subscribers, I've got this, that's great. So now I'm gonna close the channel and just go and relax and enjoy life, bye. I'm joking. So now next, obviously, once you meet one goal, you need to go for the next goal. So 100,000 subscribers, that's great, but I wanna grow the channel even more. I don't wanna kinda of get caught in that whole, oh, chase the numbers, but at the same time, it's nice to grow because one, you generate more revenue, income, you know, money. Everyone needs money, buys freedom, it's great. But two, more people means more impact. The more people that subscribe to the channel means more likely when I put out a video, it's gonna get more views. So then I know the stuff I'm putting out, it's impacting more people's lives. It's helping more students. It's helping more low socioeconomic background young people like me when I was growing up that didn't really have any connections or didn't know where to go for this type of help. It helps them. So main thing for me, if I'm honest, is grow the channel because it can have a lot more impact. And obviously the byproduct is revenue, income, whatever you want to call it. The channel going forward is going to focus on more documentary style, informative, educational videos. The videos might educate you on different financial concepts, different things that are worth knowing if you're interested in a career in finance, banking, or any of these professional industries. I'm training for a half Ironman, so I might document that. I want to grow simply. I might document the process of entrepreneurship, whether simply fails, whether it goes and be successful. Documenting that might be useful for some people who are early on in starting their own entrepreneurial journeys. For the most part, I want to keep putting out videos, but I want to definitely improve the quality of the videos and improve the quality of the storytelling so that you guys can get more value from watching the videos. By the end of the year, I wanna to get to 500,000 subscribers. That will probably need a few videos to go viral. And then in due course, I, you know, the big aim is 1 million subscribers on YouTube. Can't believe I'm saying that. Once upon a time, the channel was on zero. Then you get to one and then you're like, oh, one subscriber. Let me try to get to 100. You get to 100, they send you the email, celebrate. And you're like, oh, 100, ah, that's good. Now I want 1,000. You get to 1,000, then you're like, oh, 10,000. When you get to 10,000, somehow you get to 100,000. And then hopefully, before you know it, I'll be on a million. That's the aim. Check out Simply, it's linked in the video description. And thank you, honestly, without you, I won't be here. So this is essentially, it's not mine, it's ours, it's mine and yours. It's nice, it's good, but 
As humans, you set one goal, when you achieve it, there's another goal. You always have to move the goalpost, right? And so if there's anything you take from this video, I hope you can achieve your wildest dreams and your biggest goals. If you wanna start a YouTube channel, do it. There's no time like the present. Whether you have career goals, personal goals, life goals, um, just be consistent, work on it every day. 1% every day is all you need to do or get better at. Um, and then the compounding results will come if you stay at it long enough. Anyway, I've rambled on for so long. I don't even think anyone's gonna be here by this point because it's been a long video. However, if you made it to the end, let me know in the comments below and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much, it means a lot. Peace.